Hey guys, welcome to my daily vlog and podcast of the Uversion app verse of the day. Thanks so much for tuning in, for listening, for watching. And if you subscribe and share and comment, I would really appreciate it. Let's get right into the verse of the day and uh, let's close our eyes and pray. Thank you, Jesus, for the wonderful opportunity to get into your word on a daily basis. I thank you for the people from Life Church who built this app and who help us to go through your word. I also thank you for everyone's contributions to uh, open up your word and to help us in so many ways. I thank you, Lord, that we can get together in the cyberspace and discuss your word, pray about it, and get revelation. Holy Spirit, thank you for leading us into your truth, into your revelation, and break open this word for us today in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Guys, I love the word of God. I get excited about it and I get challenged by it. I get changed by it. And that is why I do this vlog and podcast is is to keep myself sharp. And they say iron sharpens iron. And and, and if we get together here and we let the word of God into our lives, into every area of our lives, we will all be shaped and strengthened and and become better people for God, uh, building his kingdom. And, you know, because life is really about two things, knowing Him and making Him known. That's the greatest summary I've heard of what we were created for. And the best way to know Him is to study His Word. So let's get into today's verse of the day. It comes from Hebrews 10. What an amazing chapter. So much happening here. It's the chapter right before the well-known Hebrews 11 about faith and about the whole of faith and so it's, it's, a, it's very important to read this also in context. But just for now, the, the, the verse of the day is Hebrews 10 verse 24. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. The New Living Translation says it like this. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. The New Translation, New Living Translation has it as one full sentence, that verse. The ESV ends with a comma. And the New King James also ends with a comma like the ESV. And it's very similar. Uh, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. So we are seeing the fact that it begins with and we can see that it's part of a list of things that we need to do and we will get to that now as you know and i like to get into the context but for now as we study this verse just on its own and let us consider let us think about let us take time uh, to discover things discover ways to stir up one another. What does stir up mean? It means encouraging. It means appealing to your emotion, appealing to your passion, appealing to your sense of calling. Let's stir up one another. That that takes also communication. It takes trust. It takes um, relationship, being in place. We can only stir up one another if we are in relationship or if the other one trusts the one doing the stirring, if they're a leader or whatever the case might be. And what do we stir each other up in? It's to love, to love each other, to love our neighbor, to love the world, to love God and good works. So there's two things we need to stir each other up with. So let's consider how, so let's think of creative ways strong ways, effective ways to excite one another, to encourage one another to love and to do good works. This is a very short but very clear statement and instruction on how we need to treat one another inside the body of Christ, inside the church. Your expression of your church going uh, should hopefully be that you're part of a cell group, a life group. We call it life groups in our church. 
and that you meet together on a Sunday. Not because it's a religious act, but because it's an instruction from the Word. We can't do the Christian walk alone. We can't allow that our fear of people or our personality type or whatever issues you might have. The thing I hear a lot is that I've been hurt by the church. Um, you know, those things happen. People, people take offense. They walk out of church. Some people think going to church is watching church on TV alone and there's no interaction with fellow believers. I really believe that is a dangerous territory to be in. It's great to get solid teaching, but it's a whole other ball game to let people into your life and to get into their life. Yes, it's messy. Yes, people make mistakes, they hurt you, but how perfect are you? Have you never hurt anybody? <laughs> we, and, and what has God forgiven you for? And He says, forgive as I have forgiven you. I will only forgive you to the extent that you forgive others. And it says, forgive 70 times 7. So this whole thing about being hurt by the church, we need to get into the Word, see what God says about it. We need to forgive and we need to move on. We need to be the person in church that we would like other people to be and lead by example. Instead of being hurt and running away, that's not the answer. And when we are in church, this is what we have to do. We need to consider ways, think of ways to stir each other up in love and in good works. Why? Because that changes a community that changes a city and changes a nation so let's go a little bit back and check this out in uh, context i mean hebrews 10 <laughs> uh, once again this is such a massive chapter there's so much going on there's so much in it I'm, and i'm very tempted to read the whole thing and, and 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 talk about every verse but i'm gonna discipline myself and just take us back to verse 19 therefore brothers since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new living, by the new and living way that He opened for us through the curtain, that is through His flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for, who, for he who promised is faithful. And then it's our verse of the day. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, comma, 25. Not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. I'm just going to go up to there for now. So there's a setup of the truth of what Jesus did when He died on the cross and rose from the grave. By His flesh dying on the cross, the curtain, this is referring to the curtain that was in the temple that was the separation from the, the inner court to the Holy of Holies that only the priest, the head priest of the Israelites, was allowed to go in once a year. When Jesus died on the cross, one of many signs that happened and that were, as far as I know, would um, prophesy, is that the curtain in the temple to the Holy of Holies tore right in the middle. And that was a thick curtain. It's not something you can just go fix and put back together. It's a very thick, high quality curtain that just tore in the middle. Being a sign that through Jesus, we as His followers have access to a right relationship with the Father. So he's, the writer here is establishing what we have access to through Jesus' death. By the, new living, by, by the new and living way that He opened for us through the curtain, that is through His flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God. So He's establishing all these things. This is what Jesus said. That, Therefore, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. So because Jesus did what He did, because the Holy of Holies is open for us, now we have to step in. We have to draw near. And with a full assurance. In other words, we don't have to worry. We don't have to feel guilty or ashamed 
or, or unworthy. We have been made worthy by Christ, not by our own works, but by grace through faith. And therefore, we can with full assurance walk into the Holy of Holies, knowing that our hearts are sprinkled clean uh, from an evil conscience and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Um, if you think of that uh, verse, I think it's in Psalm 24, it says, Who can ascend the, hill, the holy hill? It's him with clean hands and a pure heart. Here we hear God has done that for us. We can ascend the holy hill with clean hands and a pure heart. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. Hold fast to the confession of our hope in Jesus without wavering. This is the same kind of language that you get in James where it says, without wavering, not doubting, have that kind of faith, have that kind of hope in Jesus. And then it is our verse of the day. So knowing who we are in Jesus and what Jesus has done, approach, draw near, come in and do this without wavering. Then part of your job is to also stir up your fellow believers and think of ways to stir them up. When you have drawn near to Jesus, as this says, to the Holy of Holies, to His presence, what do you think is going to happen? I think when we consider ways to stir up, God will give us new and creative and powerful ways, downloads from heaven and how we can stir up our fellow believers to, 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 to do good works and to walk in love. Can you see the connection? It starts with knowing who Jesus is, what He has done, that flows into who we are and what we can do, what we are allowed to do. We can go into His presence with full assurance, not doubting, and then we can encourage others. It goes on to say, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some. Some have the habit of not meeting together. He's saying to us very clearly, that's not okay. It's not okay to not meet up. It's not okay to use the excuses that you may have to not go to church, to not hook up with other believers. Are people, you know, going to hurt you? They might. I've been hurt by people. I have hurt people. We have to get to the place where we realize we are fallible, but in Christ, we are supernatural beings and we have the possibility of walking in purity and righteousness with Him. Also in verse 25, we see that we can't neglect meeting together as to the habit of some. And it also mentions, but, to in, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day, what day? The day of Jesus' return, drawing near. So it's a repeat almost of what we have in the verse of the day, stirring up one another. And we're saying encouraging one another. And this is very important. And then there follows a thing that I think in, especially in circles in the church where people are very grace oriented, this is a difficult verse to read. And I'm going to, I'm going to read this and I'm careful because I know that I might get a lot of criticism for this, but this is in the Bible and I've read this in four different translations and it actually says the same thing in all of them and it references other verses like 2 Peter 2 verse 20 and uh, Luke as well where it talks about this the the real consequences of knowing the truth of Jesus accepting him and then falling away deliberately going on sinning and that there are consequences for that I believe that yes we are saved by grace through faith and once saved always saved but we have to be careful to not use that as an excuse to live the way we want we must, rem we must remember that grace is the empowerment to live the holy lives God has called us to not an excuse to live the way we used to live so I'm, I'm reading this with a little bit of trepidation but once again it comes from the Word of God and I think we need to take heed of this and this is also why the Bible speaks of the fear of the Lord. Know this and let the holy fear of God come upon you when you are faced with temptation and with weak moments. And know that there is, you know, if you deliberately sin, if you deliberately go on sinning and you don't have a repentant heart, you don't come back to God and say, I'm sorry I messed up. This can be 
something that happens to you. So let's be careful. Let's be mindful of the Word of God. Let's see the Word of God in its totality, not just pick the verses we like and that sound good to us. Because we just heard this amazing news that because of what Jesus did, we have access to the Holy of Holies, which we can confidently come to. We can help each other, stir each other up, encourage each other, meet together, be the body of Christ we were called to be. Why does he say this? Why do we need to encourage each other? Why do we need to meet up? In verse 26, we hear why. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set the, the, aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much more, uh, how much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God? That sounds hectic. And has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the spirit of grace. How many of you heard that verse before? Outraging the spirit of grace. All right. So this is actually a very challenging verse, especially if you only store grace, 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 and you forget about the fact that we serve a holy, righteous God and that a changed life in Christ actually has to be that changed. And if we don't do it, if we deliberately go on sinning, and what I get from this deliberately going on sinning, it is a heart that is um, rebellious against God. I do believe that if we read other verses about the, the, what God has saved us from and that we, if we are um, truly repentant, if we have godly sorrow, not worldly sorrow, and we, we do mess up and we repent, the Bible also says He is faithful to forgive. So the forgiveness that Christ has given us is there. And if we mess up and we come back to Him and we make it right through repentance, they, we're still in salvation. But I believe this speaks of a rebellious heart that deliberately sins and thinks I'm okay. Um, and it's interesting to say that we can actually outrage the spirit of grace if we trample upon what Jesus has done by going on deliberately sinning. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. And it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. These are all quotes from the Old Testament. The one who said it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God is Jeremiah. We, we see that the God of the Old Testament is still God. The same yesterday, today and forever. The great I am. He is still all of that. And we have to keep that in mind. So we have two very strong truths here. What Jesus did and what that means for us. But also that if we do not stay in that place. How do we stay in that place? Encourage one another, meet together, stir each other up in love and good works. That means that if we are isolated, if we are away from the body of Christ, trying to do this thing on our own, we are more prone to falling back into a life of sin. There is that danger. But if we stay close to one another, if we are allowing people to speak into our lives, to stir us up, to encourage us, and we do the same thing, we can avoid this thing happening that 20, verse 26 speaks of. For if we go on sinning, it begins with a four. And it just said we must encourage one another by meeting together. Do you, do you get that? I, I hope you're getting there. So these are two very important things. Now there's a lot more going on in, in Hebrews 10, but we have to see why we need to stir each other up in love and good works. It is so that we uh, do not fall back into old patterns and old habits. This is a very real warning that the Bible gives us. I'm not trying to condemn. I'm not trying to freak anybody out. But we have to read the Word of God and we have to be obedient to it. Because that is where life is. Remember, first it gave us the promise of what Jesus had done and what we have access to. Let's focus on that. That by grace, through faith, we can boldly go to the throne of God and be His people. And we can meet together, stir each other up, encourage each other, and that way take ground for the kingdom. There is a warning of what might happen if we don't stay there. But that is not the focus. The focus is the great news that God 
has opened up this way of living for us. Let's step into it. Let's live in there in our entirety, in, our, in, in, our, in the fullness that He has given us. All right, I hope you're encouraged and challenged and strengthened by this word. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Have a wonderful day and please keep on sharing this, commenting and subscribing. I really appreciate your um, taking part in, in this journey of the Word of God. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.